Hi, this is Cassidy Frazee, and you know me from having done recaps on Rachel's website. Um, I've done Humans, I've also done Fear the Walking Dead, and I show up to snark around on her recaps of The Walking Dead. And we have decided that we are going to set up our own website um, to actually do our own recaps, and it is going to be called The Snarking Dead. And this is one of the things that Rachel is going to be doing is she will be handling the Walking Dead recaps, which, as you know, is coming up here in America on February the 14th, Valentine's Day. Ah, uh, just what I wanted. A heart in a box. <laughs> Baby's still beating. <laughs> Something I can gnaw on, but um, yes. She will be doing those, and uh, I'll be helping snark out. But because of... Um, the, the serious family situation she had last year. She was only able to do the very first episode um, of season 6.1, I guess we could call it, which was first time again. And then after that, it fell by the wayside and she couldn't do it. And I came up with the idea that I would do a video recap of all of the uh, episodes that were in, I guess we could call it, I like to call it 6.1. And after I, we post it, there will be comments from both of us at the end of the video montage um, written out with maybe pictures and stuff like that to see how it's going to go. And uh, we'll catch up that way. I'm not going to get all these out before February the 14th. I'm not that good. But I will do my best to get as many of these done within the next couple of weeks so that anyone who is interested in catching up uh, with the old Walking Dead can. So the first episode I'm going to go over was probably my favorite of the season 6-1 and that is episode 2, JSS. Now before we start, as you know, uh, on, this, on our recaps we say just about anything that comes to mind and we do swear. So there will be swearing in this video. Uh, that is going to happen, especially with Negan coming. We have to swear because he has to swear. But before we get to that, let's get back to what we were talking about. JSS, my favorite episode. And there was a lot of conjecture as to what JSS actually stood for. Uh, we had numerous discussions on it. And you find out at the end of the episode what it does mean. But before we get to the end of the episode, we have to start at the beginning. And the beginning of this episode was something that The Walking Dead does really well, and that is the teasers they have before they do their credit roll. And in this case, you get to see how Enid started out before she came to Alexandria. Uh, she was with her parents, and of course they were in a broke down car. Uh, they were replacing a fuse, and then there was of course walkers coming and Enid's calling and then all of a sudden they come around from the other side as well and Enid screams and then it breaks away to Enid watching her parents being eaten while she just kind of whimpers inside the car and from that point on you get this several minute long montage of her just surviving uh, walking dirty downtrodden you know, just out in the elements, she's getting rained on, she's looking for places to sleep inside of cars. She eats a turtle, which the actress who played Enid said uh, the turtle was really uh, a styrofoam shell with cold chicken inside of it, and she was unable to eat chicken for about a month after that. And you finally see her arrive at Alexandria, all dirty, all you know discombobulated and she almost doesn't go in but she hears the voices and when she comes in she has JSS written on the back of her hand and you see her making these characters uh, throughout the montage she draws them in the dirt she draws them on a dirty window she makes them out of the turtle bones poor Mr. Turtle and you don't really know what it means but that was how she arrived and then from there we come up to the day of Rick's zombie fun run, which we all know from the very first episode, is not going all that well. Uh, but no one in Alexandria knows that, and that's where this episode takes place. It all takes place within the walls of Alexandria. You have Deanna out with Maggie talking about how they're going to expand this, and you're meeting uh, 
you're meeting the new Dr. Denise, who really isn't much of a doctor. She's, um, she's actually a, a former psychiatrist. So she really knows how to prescribe retinol, um, you know, Xanax and stuff like that, but nothing else. And other things are going on. Primarily, one of the first things you see is Carol talking to the women in the pantry. And one of the women uh, says, you know, she'd love Carol to show her how to cook. And Carol, of course, says, you know, well, I would, but you can't smoke in the house. And you shouldn't smoke anyway because it's bad for you. It's going to kill you. That's an important plot point. You know, if, if I were a writer, and I think I am, I would say that's called foreshadowing. <laughs> Go figure. So anyway, um, we do cut to see Carol. She's doing what she does best, uh, playing underground Carol, a uh, little Susie homemaker, and she puts a casserole in the oven. And she sets the timer for 45 minutes. She looks out the window, and there's the neighbor she was talking to, who's outside, of course, smoking. And what happens is this dude runs up on her and just starts hacking the shit out with a machete. I mean, just goes to town on her, brutally kills her right in front. Well, all things go to hell at this point. You know, people are running. People are trying to get into their homes and stuff like that. Uh, Carl comes down with an AR-15. He's like, they're everywhere. You know, they're going into lockdown. Spencer uh, is up in the, the clock tower, and he sees an 18-wheeler coming at Alexandria full on he opens up full auto rock and rolls on this dude takes him out but most importantly the truck crashes into the walls it doesn't go through but we know that this means something yeah we do so anyway while all of this is going on inside you know, Morgan shows up he was sent by Rick to go help tell everyone what was going on and we do learn that the truck horn that goes off when the truck hits the wall, that's that horn we heard at the end of the previous episode that started drawing the walkers off the road toward Alexandria. Well, Morgan shuts that horn down and then goes inside to do his Ninja Turtle shit. You know, <laughs> that's what he's doing. He does his Ninja Turtle stuff. But Carol tells Carl, I have to go. I'm going to go. I'll be right back. You know, and she takes off. So we don't know what Carol's doing yet. Uh, about this time, Enid shows up, and she's like, I'm getting ready to leave, and Carl's being Mr. Absurd of her, saying, no, that's not going to happen. And she stays with him. Now, back at the Jesse residence, uh, ex-Porch Dick's uh, family, she had first a big argument with her son, Ron, um, who is having a hard time adjusting to the fact that his dad was brutally murdered after his dad, you know, the wife beater and kid beater, because we find out he beat Ron so badly that Ron can't even lift his arm, a left arm over his head. He's having trouble adjusting to that. <laughs> Oops. And uh, so Jesse was going to give him a haircut, and they have a big argument about Rick, and then all the shit starts happening. So she's making Sam stay upstairs, and um, Ron at this point is actually outside, uh, running for his life, and he has the option of uh, staying with Carl, because Carl comes out and rescues his ass. He blows some dude away, who is just getting ready to, you know, kill Ron. But Ron can't do that. You know why? Because he sees Enid standing on the porch, and Enid's his girlfriend, and you know, all that teenage boy shit. Yeah. You know, oh, you're with my girlfriend. No, your girlfriend came to me, dude. <laughs> so he goes home, which is a bad move, because when he's getting in, there's a wolf, and that's who it, that's who's doing this attacking. It's the wolves. These assholes. They just come from out of nowhere, and it's like we're going to take over Alexandria. The wolves come into Jesse's home, okay? And Jesse gets her ass beat, and she goes down on the floor. But what the wolf, Miss Wolf, who it's a woman, doesn't realize is Jesse, was, as I said, was getting ready to cut hair. So she's got those sharp ass, pointy <laughs> scissors laying out there, and 
in probably the bloodiest, goriest human-on-human -human scene they've ever done in The Walking Dead, she just starts stabbing this bitch right, right in the chest. Just She just goes nuts on the woman. And I mean, there's blood flying everywhere. I'm going to find, and place this in the comments after the video, I'm going to find the actual press release photo that AMC ran where you see Jesse jabbing the, the scissors into the woman's chest and there's blood gushing everywhere. And there's, I mean, they're both bloody as hell. It is just incredible. She just goes completely nuts on this woman. And then, of course, once she puts her down, you know, stabs her in the side of the head, cootie gras. And meanwhile, outside, Everything's just gone crazy. Morgan almost gets whacked out by a dude because, of course, Morgan's just got his bow staff. He, he's, you know, ninja turtling. And he almost gets whacked by this dude, and all of a sudden, boom! The guy gets popped. And who pops him? Why, no, none other than Carol herself. Carol has gone full commando. She has, like, a wolf outfit on that she got off of some dude. And she's walking around with a pistol and she puts a little W mark on her forehead. And from this point on, Carol is like living a first person shooter. She is the angel of fucking death. It's seriously, she just goes into full on Terminator mode at this point. And the first thing she tries to do is she's like, I gotta get to the armory, here's my plan. I'm going to tie up your hands and look like I'm leading you off like you're going to be my slave. Cause that's what the wolves are doing with some of the residents. Which is kind of a, a jacked, <laughs> kind of a jacked up scene when you think about it because of you know who Morgan is. But of course they get a little, about halfway to the armory and Morgan decides he's going to go off and rescue Father Gabriel, which he does. and. Carol says, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm going to head for the, the armory. She gets there and she puts down like three guys, you know, three people in the process. You know, shoots a couple of them in the head and stuff like that. And then she goes inside, has a tussle with one, blows them away. The girl who's guarding the pantry and the armory, you know, she, Carol gives her a gun. She says, point it. Anyone comes, you shoot them. You know, keep the door closed. But anyone gets in here, just shoot them. That's it, you know, don't even mess around. And she just grabs pistols, she grabs ammo, and she heads out, and she is doing her angel of death thing. Seriously, this shit gets heavy. And in one of, to me, funniest scenes was um, Father Gabriel and Morgan are talking to this dude who was subdued by Morgan. And, you know, the guy is like, you're not supposed to be here. We're freeing you. You know, we're going to help you. This is, you're not meant to live like this. You're like, BAM! <laughs> Carol just walks up without any provocation whatsoever. She just walks up, points down on, draws down on the dude, and just, that's it. You know, round to the head, caps the guy, he's down, she hands a pistol to Morgan and wanders off. I mean, it's just like that. Get business done, you know? <laughs> get busy shooting or get busy dying. And we know what Carol wants to do. This is just like when she rescued everybody at Terminus. And she went just completely sociopathic, you know, psycho bitch. I'm going to kill anyone who gets in my way. And she does. That's what she does throughout this episode. She is just whacking dudes. And we even saw her put down one of the Alexandrians in kind of a similar way. You know, she's not digging it, but she knows it has to be done. And this woman was going to die anyway. So she's holding her. She's like, shh, 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 shh. She's got covering her mouth and then sticks a knife in her head. You tell, you can tell that Carol doesn't like what she's doing. But she has to do it. And that's one of the things that has happened with Carol's, char uh, Carol's character, is that she knows what has to be done. She told us to Mika, you know, people who are weak aren't going to survive. So we have to, you have to toughen up. You have to be able to do these things. And that's essentially what you see Carol here doing. She'll do anything she can to protect the group but more importantly, to protect herself. And she knows that if they got a hold of 
the armory, if the wolves got into the armory and got these weapons, it would be game over. She would rather see a dead wolf than anyone else. Well, of course, Morgan's on the other side of the line. He doesn't want to kill anyone. And we'll find out eventually in a couple of episodes why he doesn't like to kill anyone now. But in the meantime, this actually hurts him because he allows a couple of wolves, a few wolves actually, to escape. Uh, and one of them escapes with weapons. Um, smart move, Morgan. And he and Carol have words. and He's basically telling her that I know you don't like doing this. And she's like, I gotta do it, you know. But you can tell later. Uh, she sits down to have a smoke, it looks like. And you can see that it's really putting a strain on her. Carol's a very complex character. She's the sort of person who is just about ready to snap. And the closest analog she has from the comic is actually Andrea. Uh, in the comic, Carol herself committed suicide. Big surprise. Uh, she just never really got over uh, being a battered wife, and also she didn't get over the fact that uh, she was upset that Michonne stole her boyfriend. <laughs> that shit happens. Uh, here she's taken out all the aspects of comic Andrea, uh, not TV Andrea. We, we won't talk about that. But she's tough, and she will do anything she can to survive. Morgan will do what he can to survive. And in fact, you see it happen later when he goes into his house and he's ambushed by a wolf. Uh, and in fact, it was one of the wolves that was going to kill him originally. And, um, well, you think he killed him. You, you see him get into a fight and he gets the better of him and then he puts him down and he tells him, I'm sorry. And then he does a final swing with his bow and then everything goes dark. So you're guessing, mm, this guy's probably dead. The Walking Dead is also great at doing something which is called unintended consequences coming back to bite you on the ass. And um, we've seen this time and again with instances where, you know, the smart thing to do is take care of the problem now before it becomes a bigger problem later. And of course that doesn't happen. So the very, very, very end of this Carl gets up to take the casserole out because the timer dings. And when he turns around, you know, comes down, looks around, Enid's gone. And she's left a message for him. And this very simple message, just survive somehow, JSS. This is what she did when she was out on the road, just survive somehow. That's really the, in, the whole story behind this episode, is that people do what they can to survive. And that's what Carol did. That's what Morgan did to a certain extent. That's what everyone did to a certain extent. Um, just survive somehow. Now there's two important things that I want to finish off with here. And just little trivia points actually. Uh, one is that at the very end, one of the Alexandrian characters, Holly, uh, dies. Uh, she was you know, gutted pretty badly and she died of blood loss. Well, if you know the comic, if you know the comic, then you know that Holly actually plays a rather important part. Um, further on down the line from where the story is now in the comic, uh, she plays a very important part further on down the line and she plays an important part with one of the main characters in the story. Uh, and in the later episodes from here, you'll actually see someone step up to kind of take, looks like it's she's taking Holly's place. And uh, like I said, if you know the comic, you'll know what that is. The other thing that has been pointed out by a few other people is the time element. Carol set the timer for 45 minutes, and that was when the first attack occurred. The first wolf killed the person across the street that Carol saw. Everything comes to an end right around the time it ends. Uh, the timer dings, and Carl takes the casserole out and sets it out to cool and realizes Enid's gone. On the show, if you pay attention, 45 minutes of time actually went by. 
between when Carol set the timer and when it went off. 45 minutes. So in actuality, we got to see the wolf attack on Alexandria played out more or less in real time. And it's one of the few th shows that that's ever actually happened on. There, there's only been a few of them where you've seen stuff happen in real time. And this was one of them, and it was done well. This was probably, again, one of the, the best performances. And of the characters who stand out, uh, Melissa McBride, Carol, the angel of fucking Alexandrian death, uh, she really stole the show just by being the badass she actually is. But you do get to see that being a badass in the zombie apocalypse does have consequences. And it's starting to play heavily on Carol's mind. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, kind of rough, kind of ragged. And uh, my mind's skipping all over the place, but I had fun, so there you are. 21 minutes. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Catch you later. Bye.